Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. In the last hands on session, you were introduced to the basics of mass spectrometry data interpretation. This knowledge is very essential while writing the codes for creating softwares that can analyze the large scale mass spectrometry based data. In today's session, Dr. Karl Clauser will show you more complex spectra and make an effort to interpret the data manually. So, let us welcome Dr. Clauser for today's session. All right, let's take a look at the next one that we have here. This, this one I'm going to tell you, uh, give you some advance warning that this is not a triptych peptide. Okay. This comes from uh, an experiment where we're doing an immunopeptidomics. So uh, MHC or, or what we call HLA peptides, human leukocyte antigen uh, peptides have been isolated. And this comes from the allele that is B57. Okay. This particular allele has a motif where the C terminus is used the tryptophan or phenylalanine. Okay. The amino acid mass for tryptophan is 186. Phenylalanine is 147. Okay. If we add 19, we would get the Y1 ion mass. So Y1, if it was a tryptophan, would be 205. And if it was a phenylalanine, it would be 166. Okay. This is consistent here with Y1 if this is tryptophan. Okay. 159 is also listed on the sheet that I gave you as an ammonium ion for tryptophan. Okay. This is 17 Daltons less, so that would be Y minus ammonia. All right, we don't have a whole lot of symmetry here, so we don't readily have by pairs, do we? Maybe 292, I guess we do have one, so this. All right, then the mass difference between these guys is 28. Mass difference between these guys is 28. So what ion type is the 904 peak? B or Y, right? 28, B minus 28 is A, right? Okay, and what's the mass gap between that is 83, 87. What amino acid is 87? Serine, right? All right, I'm going to add an extra peak here. This is 1108. Okay, and that mass difference there is 204 minus 18, 186. Okay, so tryptophan is what we say is at the N terminus, C terminus, sorry. All right, um, this mass gap is 113, okay, so that would be leucine. Okay, what can we do next? This is also 28, right, so we're still B ion, okay. Then if we go all the way here, that's a long distance. But that is 163. What's 163? Tyrosine. Okay. Tyrosine. All right. What else can we do? Okay, so let's see if we could keep going. The, this was a BY pair, so this should probably also be 87, right? All right, so that, that much is 
what I can easily do, let's take a look and see what the best we could expect to do was. Okay, uh, I said YLW, this is saying YS, so that's correct, YSW. Um, and then we have, so there is long, dis long enough distances between these things that uh, we don't have individual sequence, okay? This BI in here, right, is in between the R and the P, okay? Some of these other ions here in, this, in the spectrum are giving internal ion type fragmentation, okay? So there's, uh, this right here is saying PD is at 213, and then you can go up to 376, right, that is adding tyrosine. Then there's uh, also an ion that's fragmenting to give DYIS, okay? So that's the extent of sequence that we can easily determine. All right, I'm gonna go on to the next one. All right, so th th this one is a good example of why I like to start at high mass. Th this one is also not a tryptic peptide. I can tell by the file name where it says HLA in it. So this is again immuno, uh, and in the, and the, sorry, the allele is B57, so it's again something that should end in um, tryptophan or phenylalanine. Right here, right, okay. Okay, wait a minute, so that's 71, 99, let's put up this, 11.33, okay, what can we do, this is 101, and 38.71. Okay, 547, 53 goes to 600, this is a 129. All right, so we learned this last time that 205 is Y1, okay. Okay, so this is Y1. So this would be B2, and that mass difference there is, is that 18 or 28? It is 18. Okay, B2. So that would be the 71 and the 101, and then we should be able to go 71 more, or not, okay? So that's so you want to call that 186, right? So that, that, that would be another tryptophan. That would be 156. That would be, that would work. Okay, arginine, tryptophan. Valine. Not enough information to get anything else. All right, so, so this one is another HLA peptide, but the allele is C0701. I forget what the C terminus is for that, so we're going to have to figure it out. All right. Um, all right. So. Where will we start here? So 1064, 120 is an ammonium ion for phenylalanine. 101 is for Q or K. Phenylalanine's Y1 ion should be 147 plus 19, which is 166. Okay, so Y1 for phenylalanine.
That is a mass, 113 gap. That's 128, yeah. Right here, right there, yeah, that's 147. Okay, that would be, that's 161. No, it's 166. Um, okay, which uh, plus 18, right? Okay, so again, that would be the 147F. This would be Q, L, F. Okay, and these would be, that would be Y on them? No, that would be B ions. This is 28, right? It's a B ion, 28. BI. All right. What else can we do here? That's again a 28. Okay. All right. All right, I'm going to stop there and let's keep and see what the answer says. FLQF. Okay, that's what I had. And not enough information to get anything else. The two seventy six Y two. Okay, that's here. This is the one twenty eight. Okay. Okay, these are doubly charged ions here. Okay, so this one is not fragmenting very completely. All right, so and then I think, pretty sure this is the last one. All right. What's your first impression of that spectrum? It, look, it looks a lot more complicated than the other ones, right? Okay. So part of the reason is a little bit longer. So things are, um, spacing's closer together. But there also seems to be a bunch of peaks that are close together. Okay. And if you look close, you can see that this, these peaks are separated by 18. So this is 18. 18. 18. That one's 28. All right. That is 
This is a tryptic peptide, so it's arginine or lysine. But we don't have it down to low mass. All right. 266. It's going to be lysine. Okay. So I think this is as lysine. didn't intend to do that. Let's, let's go back here. Let's keep going. 147 F. I-66. Seven twenty. Oh, it wants to go down to that one. All right. Well, pretty close. Okay. All right. That's that's the end of that. So hopefully, what I've tried to give you is a feel for how much how incomplete the information is in some of these spectra. Okay. Any other questions before before we adjourn? Yes. How do we know what? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. So. The way that I've said, after I've told you this is all the information is, and then I tell you magically this is the answer, your good question would be, how do I know magically it's the answer? Well, the spectrum all by itself has no more information much really than we, could, than we were able to determine. There's uncertainty in what the sequence is. But if the protein is derived from something in the human proteome, the possibilities that would allow for the uncertainty in our interpretation are not present in the proteome. And so that's why, that's why I'm describing it as, a, as that is the answer, okay? But let's suppose that after you'd had an answer, none of them are in the human proteome. Then how do you know what's right? Well, you don't, okay? If you have a lot of spectra that you, you could do good de novo on, and they are not in the sequence database you're looking in. Maybe you're looking in the wrong place, right? Or maybe your your database is not complete. Okay, there could be there could be mutations. There could be parts of the genome that are not that are not uh, ex part of your database. Maybe your sample has contaminated with something else. Now, there's another aspect to this that that uh, I know, but you don't, is that when you get this loss of water happening like this, that often happens when you have a glutamic acid at the end terminus of the uh, peptide. Okay. 
You can get losses of ammonia that look like this when you have a glutamine at the end terminus of a peptide. So there are, you know, there are certain aspects of the amino acids have, have chemistry associated with them uh, that uh, after you see enough examples, it starts to become more rule than exception. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> there, there is chemistry behind these things. Okay, slash, the slashes I just use is nomenclature to indicate what kind of fragmentation is happening between the residues. I use a red slash to be a Y ion, a blue slash to be a B ion, a pink vertical bar means there's both. Okay, that just, that's just, I, that's not a universal thing within the field, right? But it, it allows you when you do a lot of this to just look at the thing and know what's going on, okay? I hope today's hands-on session helped you to appreciate the complexity of mass spectrometry data resulting from either improper fragmentation or presence of amino acids like proline that creates problem or release of molecules such as water or ammonia due to the presence of amino acids such as glutamic acid or glutamine at the end terminus. The increasing knowledge of interpretation of data by practicing more examples and even remembering the inputs provided in this session will help you greatly. The way mass spectrometry based proteomics have really taken big pace for any kind of biological problem there is no need to look at the complex proteome analysis. If you are able to interpret your mass spec data, you can greatly benefit. I just like to emphasize that sample preparation and data interpretation are the two most crucial steps. You as a participant, as a learner can prepare your own sample, send your samples to some facilities where they have the advanced mass spectrometers such as ours at IIT Bombay. And then after running those samples, you can obtain the raw data as long as you have no ability to interpret your mass spec data, then you are pretty much in a commanding position to get the best from your data set. So, please do go through today's lecture as well as the previous lecture and the hands on sessions in more detail. Thank you.